I would now like to call the March 8th, 2021 Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to order. Can we please start with the roll call? Sue Alberg. Here. Scott Conlin. Jeff Ellenbogen. Here. Manoj Gangwar. Here. Paige Lewis. Here. Nicholas Novello. Here. Dan Olson. Here. And Council Liaison Aaron Rodriguez. Here. Great. Thank you. Our first item of business is approval of the agenda. Hopefully everyone got a chance to look at it. Does anyone have any proposed changes to the agenda? Scott? Uh, on number six, it says old business it. There's a typo just on the title. Oh, line. well, yep. We'll get to the minutes in just a second. We're just looking at the agenda right now. Oh, I apologize. Sorry. That's okay. Yep. So any proposed changes to the agenda? If not, uh, I'll need a motion to approve the agenda. I move we approve the agenda. Thank you, Sue. Second. Can I get a second? Thank you, Scott. All in favor? Aye. Okay, any opposed? Great, thank you. Um, now we will move to the previous month's minutes. Um, so Scott, if you wanted to point out where that was again. Oh yes, it's uh, number six on the minutes. It's just the title has the letters IT attached to old business. Yes, Scott, that is a typo. I noticed that after I sent out the packet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So yes, it is. <laughs> no big one. No Thank big you. One. Thanks. Any other proposed amendments to last meeting's minutes? Great. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes, please? I move we approve the minutes from the last meeting. Thanks, Sue. I second that. Thank you, Dan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Okay. Uh, we're now at public invited to be heard. So, Aurora, I'll turn it over to you. So we do have a member from our public who would like to participate. And I will ask you if you can please state your name and address for the record. And you have three minutes to comment. Yeah, howdy everybody. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, everyone's safe and sound. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the invitation to uh, to join you all. My name is Kaya Belkis. I'm at 2281 Watersong Circle here in lovely Longmont, Colorado. Um, I um, am part of a development group with St. Vrain FC and just wanted to reach out and say hello to everybody and make the connection to you all that we're out here. Uh, we're doing the best we can with the circumstances, but we are uh, looking forward and looking ahead to a, a really wonderful new year and a, a really wonderful going forward um, program here in Longmont and elsewhere. And just wanted to say hello and that we're looking forward to working with you in the future, hopefully to, to identify some opportunities for us to work together and collaborate so that we can continue to bring our many years of um, volunteers and, and soccer love uh, to uh, future, future uh, kids in Longmont and elsewhere. We just wanted to just say hello and uh, thank you for the opportunity and look forward to working with you all uh, moving forward. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Aurora, do we have anyone else? We do not at this moment. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we will move on to old business. Um, I don't think we had any old business, right? Okay. 
Uh, so that's easy. We'll move on to new business. And um, hopefully you saw in the packet, a lot of our focus tonight is on the um, impending budget process and particularly thinking about the capital improvement projects. And I just wanted to say thank you for the background information in the packet. I thought that was really helpful. Um, so I'll turn it over to you, Jeff, I think, to kick us off for this one. I think uh, Steve is going to lead us off. Uh, Steve's going to. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry that my lighting's not so good in this office, but uh, I'm in a second office. But uh, hi, Steve Ransweiler, Senior Project Manager for Natural Resources. Um, this is always an exciting meeting for me. I love talking about projects we have coming up in the next uh, four or five years. As I think a lot of you know, the capital improvement program is uh, the city's device where we plan for the next five years of capital infrastructure projects. Um, we do it for all of our utilities, our, um, our transportation system, our park system, um, certain criteria for becoming a capital improvement project is the minimum cost needs to be I can't remember if it's five or $10,000, but there is some sort of limit. So it's not the, uh, the smaller things, 10, thank you, Dan. Um, the, um, some of the capital improvement projects are ongoing maintenance. Uh, you'll see that we have some pool maintenance, some pumps, uh, irrigation pump station maintenance, CIPs. Those are sort of an ongoing project over the, uh, that we do year to year, but we want to make sure we're capturing dollars. So we have the uh, the resources available to maintain our infrastructure on an annual basis outside of the general uh, O&M budgets that we set. Uh, the other portion of that are capital improvements, which are either new improvements to our park and transportation system and utility system or uh, maintenance of the existing infrastructure that we have. Uh, we have different CIP projects in place, and um, I'm happy to go through what is in the, so what we included in your packet were the projects that were funded in the 2021 CIP. As you know, um, it's a five-year CIP, so the last one that was approved by City Council in October, November of 2020 was for 2021 to 2025, but when the city approves the budget, they only approved the budget for 2021. It's a planning document, but there is nothing funded outside of that first year. We continually, we annually ask council to update the capital improvement program each year based on the, um, you know, the plan we plans we set forth. But things can change two, three, four years out as priorities can change. So sometimes you'll see changes in the CIP. Um, and the future years as you know, different priorities change amongst the city. So um, before I start going through this um, program, I wanted to see if there's any questions from the board, things you want me to hit. I'm not sure how deep you want me to dive. I have Google Earth up. I'm happy to take you, fly you to every project that's in the CIP. Um, I'm happy to give a, a light overview. I'd really like to hear from the board what you'd like me to speak with you about tonight, knowing I want to get, give enough time at the end of the uh, presentation for ample conversation and questions from the board. So do you want to maybe run through that? Great. if you could? Thanks, Steve. Um, I'll put a couple of placeholders out there and then call in others. Um, I'd love to hear more about Dry Creek Park and also Roosevelt Park. They saw them both mentioned with a variety of projects. So those are a couple of areas I'd be interested in. Um, Dan, I saw you had your hand up. Who else? Dan, go ahead. You're on mute, Dan. That's good. Thank you. What's the difference between the list on page six, which is parks, open space, and trails, versus page 27, which is, oh wait, that was page 27 is parks, open space, and trails. And page six says uh, something different. Parks, oh, parks, parks recreation, recreation and, and open space. space. And uh, it, it's confusing to me. Is there two different, there's clearly two different lists. 
Uh, I can tell you, Jeff, or I'm sorry, that um, the list on page six was the list that Jeff put together from a recreational standpoint. The list on page 27 was the list that Kathy Cronin and I put together from the Capital Project Management. Uh, and it encompasses all of the CIP, where I think Jeff was hitting the high points. Okay. So the, I'm no, all the, that the, more detail. Yep. The, the ones I included are all the first pages of all the CIPs that are funded, which includes some of those that are on Steve and Kathy's list. I noticed some overlap. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, and, and one thing to remember is that the, the list that starts on page 27 of your packet talks about projects that were funded in previous years. Um, we do not spend, some projects spend their dollars from January 1st to December 31st, and then move on to the next year. Some projects are multi-year projects, sometimes staffing um, available makes us roll projects from year to year. And um, I'm gonna try to get some better light on me, good Lord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so it's what, what we, Kathy and I tried to do on the page 27 is really let you know all the projects that we are working on. Just because it says it's funded in 2021 does not necessarily mean we're gonna expend all those dollars in 2021. We do a rollover program where we roll funds over from year to year. David, I don't know if you want to expand on that at all. No, I think you did a good job, Steve. It's just that idea that Steve mentioned that that <clears throat> council funds that one year, but we still have dollars. And I really want Steve and Kathy to let you guys know that we are still rock working on projects that were funded years previous that have carryover dollars that take a lot of their time to work on those. So as you look at these projects that are funded, there's their, their work plan is bigger than that. So that's really what we're trying to do is make sure you see that. Um, and again, I, I think I don't have that document in front of me, but Sometimes the projects that fall under parks and recreation, open space, we're also working on ones that fall under drainage projects and streets too. So that, that gets captured, I think, in Steve's longer list as well. So thank you. Yeah, as an example, I can tell you the Spring Gulch 2 project that we've recently opened and are going to be celebrating in 2021 was first funded in 2011. Takes time sometimes, things change. Go ahead, Paige. Great, are there other Areas of interest for board members, things you'd particularly like to hear more about that you saw in the project list? Yeah, Dan, go ahead. I made a list of uh, six different ones that caught my eye, little details, but I don't know if you want to, how we want to go through this. If that's what you're asking. Should I just go through my list? Or what do you recommend, Steve? Jump into the I was just gonna say, how about if I just jump into the projects and um, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, that includes other staff, Kathy, Jeff, Dave, and I'll try to capture at a high level. If you want more detail about any of these projects, I'm happy to dive into them either at the end or as I'm going through. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Okay, great. Um, First project is a long-term project that's on page seven of your packet is uh, PRO 05B, St. Frank Greenway. Uh, you, as you can see in the, it's been first shown the CIP in 1992. That even ex exceeds my time here. Um, what we're working on right now with that project is the Eastern and Western extensions of the St. Frank Greenway. We have funding for the trail extension from Golden Ponds under Airport Road up to Westview Middle School. And um, we are waiting for land acquisition, which shouldn't be as cumbersome as it has been, but it is, has taken me several years to get the land acquired. Um, I'm hoping to have that done in the somewhat near future and start design, get uh, design started this year and build that project next year. That's phase 12 of the St. Frank Greenway. Phase 13 is the extension from Sandstone Ranch East to St. Vrain State Park. Uh, Danielle Levine is, is uh, the project manager for that at this point, and she is working on, if you remember, we received a $1.5 million grant from CDOT for that project, and um, she is working on the CDOT needs to approve our request for proposals for 
design services. And so she is working for CDOT. She is, has the RFP to CDOT for their approval. And we're working through that approval right now. Um, timing, anticipated timing on that is construct, or I'm sorry, design starting this year with about a 12 to 15 month design period, construction likely starting in 2023. Any questions on that before I move on? Okay. Dan, go ahead. Dan's on oh. mute. Though. Yep, there you go. I have another one. It's kind of a general question. In this one, for example, 1.3 million is in 2021. That's funded, I presume, and away we go. And you have 3.6, et cetera, million in 2022. What would you guess is the likelihood? And I don't mean necessarily for this one, but as we go through the list, can we just assume that these are all happening like you project? You know, it depends on the fund. Um, historically, City Council has directed staff that the St. Vern Greenway project is the most important project that we are using our Conservation Trust fund dollars on. Um, that is not the only project that council could direct staff to use Conservation Trust funds for. I so would. This one in particular is twice as much next year as this year, or even more. Yeah. And Correct. so it's like, yeah, is it really going to happen or not? I mean, I just don't know how to judge this. Well, it's it's. I would say it's likely because council, if they were to defund this that project for 2022, they would be walking away from the 1.5 million dollars yeah. at CDOT. Makes sense yeah. to me. I get it. Yep. Right. Okay. Thanks. So you know, I can, I can never speak for city council. They're the ultimate decision makers, and they have different strategies and different. Um, not even strategies, just priorities pop up. I get it. Sometimes we have to, you know, about, do it about face. We did that about seven, eight years ago and had to really change the way we looked at our capital improvement program. I don't anticipate that happening for this project in the near future. But your strategy is to be realistic about each year. You're not putting a whole bunch of stuff in next year that you thought, ah, well, well, we're not going to have it this year, but next year we'll kill it. We have an anticipated fund balance that projects five years out for all of the different funds that we have. We do not go into the CIP with approved funded project exceeding that fund balance. Okay. Okay. Fair. Thanks. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Steve, I have a question. This is just, this is sort of an extra. Is there then a connection from St. Vrain Park? over to that Firestone area, the connector trail? Is that something the state is doing or what is going on there? Um, and David, you can jump in. We've met with St. Frame State Park staff and they have been working with the Firestone folks. And I believe that they have funding in 2021 to make the connection from Firestone over to St. Frame State Park. There's also state funding, state park funding for improvements within the state park to make improvements be between those two trails. You know, city funds wouldn't necessarily go toward connecting over to Firestone, but we are coordinating with the different entities to work toward, you know, this is the Front Range Trail. We're trying to get this from New Mexico to, I'm sorry, down here, New Mexico up to uh, uh, Wyoming. And so we will do everything we can to support other municipalities and other efforts to make trail connections for this Front Range Trail. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I just wasn't sure building those. Yes, yeah, Sue, the only thing I would, would add is that, um, as Steve mentioned, we've been out to look at the park connection. The, the place right now where this trail would connect um, with state parks is at the underpass there at um, Highway 118. If you know where the St. Brain River goes under there, um, there's a potential for the connection there. Steve has looked at it, evaluated it. Um, our boss has looked at it, evaluated it. And we have some questions on how that might work. We also are looking at some at-grade crossings where we can still come into the park because there is a a signal light down there too. So the goal really would be to tie into the state parks when we do this and they are looking to make that happen. Um, and then the state park does tie in to a Weld County trail that goes under I-25. That trail system was taken out in the 2013 floods. Weld County is working on putting that back together. So Steve talked about being excited about you know, his projects and I'm glad he is, but this is one I think that he and staff are working on that will be pretty exciting once we get these connections out to the state park, state park out beyond that. So. Um, it's an exciting project. And Steve yeah. will talk about the other end of it here in a minute too. Thank you. Yeah. And, and if anybody wants me to bring up Google Earth, um, 
I can show you where these are. What I would recommend is that we wait until the end of the conversation that I can go back and show a couple routes because it's going to simplify Aurora sharing screens back and forth. So, but um, just let me know. Uh, the, the next project that we have in our queue is the uh, Sandstone Ranch um, phase four. And we currently have that funded for 2022 for design in 2023 uh, for construction. That is for a, um, the completion of the master plan that was uh, approved by or adopted by city council in 1999, I believe. Um, shows another three ball fields, a sports court, uh, playground, scoring booths, restrooms, shelters, parking, that sort of stuff. Um, since we've built that project, uh, there, you know, if you can believe that the originally built projects back in 2001 uh, are old enough now, 20 years old, where some of that uh, equipment needs to be replaced. So it's anticipated that into this project will roll into it um, replacement of expiring playground equipment if we don't get to it beforehand, as well as uh, reassessing ADA accessibility throughout the park. And uh, Board member Conlon just created a, sent me an email last week, which is a great concept. When we built Sandstone Ranch, we did not anticipate the Spring Gulch 2 trail and the underpass underneath Highway 119. We are planning a connection and hopefully the board members have gotten a chance to get out and look at the new trail between Stephen Day Park and Union Reservoir. It's a, it's a great improvement for the city. We're working to try to connect, make that connection from Union down to Highway 119. Once you get under Highway 119, you're in the Sandstone Ranch and to get to the St. Brain Greenway, it's not a clear route what the, the best way to get down there is. Uh, you know, if you can remember back in 1999, there was no land north of 119 that was annexed into the city, except for Concepts, uh, Concepts Direct. So um, it was just, it was, it was nothing we anticipated. So I think we'll look with that phase four project, we'll look at um, improving connectivity from Highway 119 down to the St. Frank Greenway in some way, shape, or form. And so you'll see a change to this CIP when I submit it for this next round to try to accommodate some of the possible costs associated with that. I'm going to keep going unless there's questions. Jeff, I'll let you speak to swimming and wading pool maintenance, but it sort of speaks to what I referred to at the beginning as far as just annual maintenance for our facilities. Yep, and just to give you a little bit of it, an idea of what we'll be working on, we're gonna uh, do a, a number of replacement pumps and motors at the various pools, including valves. Um, we're gonna do work on the water slides, both at the rec center and at Sunset Pool. And then uh, we'll also resurface the leisure pool at the rec center. Any questions on that? I have a question. I don't know if Paige can see my yeah, hand. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm no, curious. I can see you will now, those, Nate. Will maintenance to those slides or anything be noticeable or is it just upkeep? I mean, will it be something where you're like, oh, it looks physically different? No, it's all upkeep. We have to gel coat them every so many years. Otherwise, they get too rough and start hurting people when they go down them. Great. Thanks. Uh, the next one on your screen is going to be uh, park irrigation pump systems, systems rehabilitation, PRO 113. And that again, uh, Timber's not with us tonight, I don't believe, but it's really just operations and maintenance. We have 31 raw water irrigation systems, systems around the city. Pumps fail, diversions need work, drop structures need replaced, they need cleaned out. All of that sort of stuff is outside of what the typical operational budget can handle. And so we put money in to the CIP to make sure that we have the funds available in order to accomplish that work while not taking away from maintaining all of the rest of our infrastructure. Um, park bridge replacement program is- I have a quick question there, Steve. Sorry, uh, is it only at McIntosh Lake? Like your map shows, it's clearly all over the city. 
you have a map there showing Dawson Park and McIntosh Lake. It is all over the city. Yes, I'm okay. not uh, snuck through. It should just be various locations. All right. That's what my guess was. Thanks. Yeah. I, I have a quick question, if I can, on that one. Uh, so is this a common occurrence for us to put in these types of maintenance projects into the capital improvement plan uh, because there's, you know, uh, a lack of funding for from the, uh, from the operation, from general operations, or is this something that's a, a one-off? It's not a one-off. Um, I don't manage the operation side of it, but it's my understanding that they, man they, they budget for general maintenance. These are anticipated one-offs, if that makes sense. These are things that they know are going to happen, that they know are going to need maintenance. So they, they, they don't always spend this amount of money each year. Sometimes they exceed it if we have things that fail in multiple locations. I think we had a bad year three or four years ago with our pump systems. And so it's just a matter of having money available to be able to react quickly to failures in our systems rather than having to scramble. And, um, you know, if you think about it, if you put an irrigation system down, you're scrambling for money, that plant material doesn't really care. It's dying if there's no water to it. So this is a way, and it's, this is not just for park operations or pool operations. This is the same for our sanitary sewer, stormwater, water systems, where they all have operational CIP projects within the capital improvement program. Does that answer David, your question? Did you want to add something? Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that was a good overview, Steve. It, it is a question. It, is a great que it was a great question because we internally had these um, with the city. I know other organizations kind of struggle too, that when you have these sort of like projects that come up in those high dollar pieces that meet that criteria of a CIP, because you know we want to make sure we're not just shifting O&M o &M over to CIP. But I think there's a very conscious decision that is, these are very similar projects that come in that, that meet all those definitions of the expense that... Um, there has been that decision over the years through the city to take some of those and bundle them into a, into CIP projects that we just make sure that for one piece that we, like Steve said, have those dollars, but also we keep them on track that we don't get behind. If they've gotten to the o and maybe that chance that they could slip back, but this actually keeps them on a radar and keeps them moving forward. But it's a great question. It's a question that staff often has about how do you look at like projects and then determine if they're o and or if they're, if they're CIP. Yeah, the other thing to remember is that the park system is not an enterprise fund. So we do not have incoming funds from utility uh, rates where we can generate funds to cover a catastrophic loss. So we, you know, the public improvement fund where this money comes from is very, is highly competitive with other departments and divisions throughout the city. And so we just need to make sure that we have money available to manage our infrastructure, knowing that things, things fail. They inevitably do. And our operations folks looks at these numbers annually to gauge whether or not they need to increase or decrease based on what they're anticipating happening. Got it. And I can, I can tell that the numbers are very even around 75,100 because we don't really know the exact cost. It's kind of ambiguous. Okay. Exactly. Um, I'm going to let Kathy talk about the park bridge replacement program because she's, I think, a little bit more familiar than I am with it. Okay. Hi, I'm Kathy Crone. I'm another senior project manager in Parks and Natural Resources. Um, and so PRO 136, the park bridge replacement program has been a program for a while now. Um, it's based on uh, some assessments that we did way back in 2012 to, to identify high priority, you know, safety needs, if there's undercutting, um, meeting code, you know, some of our bridges were just re were installed so long ago. Um, this project, um, what's funded is intended to replace the Garden Acres pedestrian bridge over the oligarchy. Um, we do have a bridge salvaged from the St. Brain project that can be used for that bridge. Um, and then the other one that's funded is um, there the uh, gosh it's um, 
at the end of Long's Peak Avenue, again, over the oligarchy, that one may not need to be a full replacement, but again, there's some, it, there's some undercutting. So we might just need to do some structural repairs once we start looking at that one. Um, and then we have some funding further out for, for potentially, um, we've identified um, the bridge over the former bonus ditch south of Dickens. Um, and so once we get that far, far out, you know, we're not quite sure. We'll take a look. We'll see if it's a high priority. Um, basically, what happened with this one, though, is we did have funding for the two bridges at Garden Acres and Oligarchy. Prior to COVID, we had carry forward funds. And part of um, the COVID budget reset was just kind of looking at, we, we kind of end up having a lot of carry forward funds piling up. And so we were sort of asked, you know, are you really going to get to this project or can that help us kind of right size our budget, be conservative? So instead of just continuing to carry that money forward, we just re-entered it into the CIP in the years that we thought we could do the work. Um, so we didn't lose the projects, we just kind of right sized it um, in terms of that. The other project I'll mention um, is the Spangler Park bridge replacement is a project that's on my work plan for this year to be replaced. Um, it's a small pedestrian bridge over Spring Gulch that heads kind of goes to nowhere right now because there's nothing east of it. But there is a development coming in with, a, with um, townhomes along Baker Street. Um, and that, that bridge doesn't meet code. It's got some safety concerns. So now that we see that it's going to be more used, um, that one is funded, but again, you don't see it in the CIP because it's carry forward funding. So that's another bridge that's being worked on. Um, and again, we do have a salvaged bridge. The, the smaller bridge that was at the sundial is going to be used for that one. So it's great that we're able to use some of those bridges from the St. Rain project. Um, so, and let me know if there's any questions on, on this one. Good. Yeah. I, thanks, Kathy. I am uh, glad that I was able to convince our city leaders to hold on to those um, bridges. I think it's a good investment for us to hold on to those and we'll um, reuse them as we have the uh, funds and available staff abil availability to do so. And Kathy, I'm going to let you roll right into Roosevelt Park Improvements as I think you speak to this one as well. Please. Yeah. So this particular CIP has um, a new idea for Roosevelt Park. There's been a lot of talk for several years now, um, a lot of it coming from the Senior Center and friends of the Senior Center for an outdoor fitness area at Roosevelt Park. And those can take a lot of different forms. They're getting really creative. Sometimes they're called adult playgrounds and things like that. So that is what you see funded in this CIP. Um, this CIP, could also fund in the future, there's, uh, I don't know what phase it is at this point, but the, the Roosevelt Park master plan has not been fully implemented either. That, that, that big storage open area storage, um, gosh, it's east of the ice pavilion, um, that goes away, parking gets expanded. So there are some improvements there that aren't completed at Roosevelt Park, but those are not yet funded. We'll continue to kind of look at this CIP when it's time to kind of pursue total completion of the Roosevelt Park master plan. Um, the other things I'll mention at Roosevelt Park, though, is with this project, with the outdoor fitness, Roosevelt Park, we'll talk about park renewal in another CIP, PRO 186, but we do know that the Roosevelt Park playground is ready for replacement. And so I really do hope to kind of jive those two projects, the, the outdoor fitness with the playground replacement. Um, then we could kind of look at those together and see what works. So we're looking at that further out. Um, and then I do think that the, um, the concrete for the pavilion is also in this CIP. So in terms of Roosevelt Park, there's kind of three CIPs working together for improvements at Roosevelt right now. Yeah, there is a separate CIP for the concrete at the pavilion. 
Yep. That was one of my questions. It looks like it was TBD, if I remember. Um, do you think that that work will be funded and done this year? Well, it's funded. Uh, we are not sure who's going to do it yet. We have to have that conversation with all of our different staff members to figure out who's going to handle that. Um, it hasn't yet and been. In, yeah, engineering had indicated they were going to take the lead in it. So yes, it's to be determined. <laughs> but yes, I would anticipate. But it is funded. Yeah, it, it is funded. Uh, it, it's in the. It's been funded in 2021, so the funds are there and available. And so we will have to um, figure out how that's going to happen in 2021 before the ice rink opens in November. So great, thanks. Um, the other thing that David? I. I yeah, I was just going to say, just, um, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to, again, I think it's a good thing for um, the board to kind of understand too. As we look at some of these projects, um, there are often are questions about a project in a park and who manages it and who's the best skill set. So um, sometimes it's facilities, sometimes it's park operations, sometimes it's Steve and Kathy. Um, Jeff has people that can work projects. So getting it funded is a piece of it, then how that works into different work plans work. But I think using the right skill set, Jeff mentioned engineering, I think those are great opportunities when we can. Um, capitalize on that to get additional work done. But those are definitely conversations that we're constantly trying to make sure we're all working together as we work in these these parks. But it's a it's a, just a piece I think that I want to make everyone aware of that just because Steve and Kathy are doing more than they could probably manage in one year right now that we have other opportunities and time to try to, to leverage this work and get it done. The only thing that I would add that Kathy um, um, didn't mention was there is also a storm drainage. There's a major storm drainage um, pipe that runs through the center of Roosevelt Park, sort of from north west to southeast through the center of the park. That storm, that pipe does need some maintenance over the next four or five years. And so there's a storm drainage project that is pushing funding for um, that work in the park. And so you might see some disturbance, well, you will see some disturbance to the park at some point in the future based on that project. And we're coordinating with engineering on that as well. Uh, the next um, project that's, that's shown in the CIP is funded in 2024. And that's for the completion of the Alta Park Master Plan improvements. Um, that does not include the um, playground replacement, which is scheduled for the PRO 186, which Kathy will describe in detail here as we get to it, but it's going to be adding the uh, unisex restroom, lighting and site improvements to complete that master plan. That's currently scheduled for 2024. Getting back to how I opened the, um, opened the presentation. So public improvement fund here in 2021, we're saying in 2024, we're gonna spend $423,000 at Alta Park. You know, priorities could change for that public improvement fund. That's where we think it is needed at this point in time. That's the plan. Plans do change as we get into 2022 and 2023. But that is what we're committed to at this point in time um, for that amount of money within that fund. Does that make sense? Yeah, and Steve, I would just add that, you know, a lot of these projects, we have a lot, we have... Um, master plans that were done with community and neighborhood resources and some of these older parks we they didn't have master plans when they were first installed and so back in this era of 2010 and a little earlier um, there was a lot of work done with park development um, combined with community and neighborhood resources to look at how can we revitalize neighborhoods and a lot of times they looked at their parks um, so Kensington Park, this park, some of these other parks, master plans were created with a lot of neighborhood involvement. And, you know, in terms of funding, we had to fund them in phases. And so we just have these phases of these master plans that aren't quite complete and we want to make them whole. So we try to look for places in the CIP and time in our work plan to, to go back and, and really complete those master plans. So that's one of our our goals in the CIP is to try to do that. And this is this represents one of those. Yeah, you really want to reward the community input that we received during that um, that whole process. And you don't want it to wait too long. Um, 
page you mentioned, Dry Creek Community Park, Community Park. Gosh, I think that master plan was adopted in 2008, seven or eight. So it's been almost 13 years and we've done one phase. And so do we need to relook at what the community needs in that area of town before we move forward with that, um, implementing the, the rest of that master plan? And that's something that we're always asking ourselves, um, how long is too long? versus how long, how much money do you want to spend to reinvent what you've already had accepted? So that's what we're, we're trying to figure out as we move forward with some of these things. I don't think, I think Alta Park's always going to want a restroom, so I don't, I'm not concerned about that, but some of the uses in Dry Creek Community Park may have changed, and or, or proposed uses, I should say, and so some of those trends may have changed, and we might need to relook at that. That's why it's, Sandstone was the, the, the best that we've accomplished in my time here, is that because we went in and knocked out the first three phases pretty darn quickly over a seven to eight year span and uh, implemented what the community, the community vision that we were all trying to work toward. And so um, that's always a struggle with funding and resources. All right. Um, the next project up is Roosevelt Park, Pavilion Concrete Replacement. And as Jeff, uh, Mentioned that is funded $270,000 this year for, um, for replacement. And I think that is, has some weight to it because of the safety um, issues associated with it. And so once the ice thaws, we'll get in there and um, figure out how we're going to get that accomplished with the different work groups we have within the city. Uh, the next one is Montgomery Farms land acquisition. That's an exciting one. That's the property at the southwest corner of uh, Weld County Road 1 and Highway 66. And we've been buying over a five-year period from Boulder County. Um, this is our final payment. So we will own that property outright um, by the end of this year once we make this payment. And I think, David, you mentioned that we've already made it, if I'm not mistaken. Um Per the purchase agreement, Boulder County will continue to manage the agriculture on it until we want to move forward with um, any sort of improvements on that, um, that site. Just got a question from the public last week, talked to a woman who moved in west of there and wanted to know what the schedule was. And there isn't anything in the five-year CIP that says we're gonna do anything at that site. That being said, council can always direct us to change that. If you remember when we did the pool and ice facility um, ballot initiative, one of the sites that we were considering was Montgomery Farm. Well, we weren't, we're, we were not going to just throw an ice facility in the middle of the park. We were gonna do master planning for that whole park site if that were funded and we were that was the site that was selected. So you can see how we would just have to change our approach to that site if council the public were to direct us to put some sort of facility there that we're not currently anticipating. But right now we don't have anything in the five year CIP to do any sort of master planning or uh, design development for that site. And then the next project PRO 201 is dog park two relocation. Uh, that is the dog park that is on the south side of St. Brain Road east of, I'm sorry, west of Airport Road, west of the Public Works uh, Maintenance Facility. That facility does need to expand, though it's my understanding from talking with our Public Works folks that that need may have been reduced in the past couple years. So it might not be quite as urgent as it once was, but it still is an urgent project for the city. We have identified land at the north east corner of Rogers Road and Airport Road as a possible location for this dog site, dog park site. Been working with the property owner for about 18 months, trying to get the land dedicated to the city. Um, I got an email from their lawyer a week or two ago saying he's still working on it. So hopefully that will come to fruition. If that's the case, we're looking to do some design and construction there. Now we can design all we want, but if we don't own the land, it doesn't do much. Uh, doesn't do much good. So we really probably need to acquire that land before we move forward with the dollars that are funded in 2021 for design and construction in 22. So those things, those are the types of things that may roll over based on the availability to get the land dedicated to us. This is all predicated on the land being dedicated to the city, not us purchasing the land. 
it's a parcel that is somewhat um, undevelopable. And so we're trying to convince the property owner that to dedicate it to the city, they get the benefit of the tax write-off as a dedication. We get the land and we're able to improve it into a dog park. The next project that's on the list is PRO 083. Uh, it's a partially funded project, primary and secondary greenway connections. Um, this is a project where we've been working on it. Well, I've been working on it since I've been here and trying to, this is a project not only for the construction of new greenway connections, but also for maintenance of our existing greenway system where the infrastructure may be failing us, failing the, the public. And so we had a great meeting with a bunch of different uh, transportation, engineering, and uh, park staff a week or so ago. We're going to be continuing to try to set up staff um, teams to try to prioritize which projects we should be moving forward with. I'm not sure if, uh, sure if Scott shared with you, he shared with uh, staff anyway, a Bicycle Longmont um, survey that was asking about recreational and commuting transportation improvements that the city should pursue in the CIP. It was good information and it was nice to hear that this was uh, designated by that group, the 137 responses as the most important capital project for that type of um, infrastructure, the off street infrastructure. We, uh, we do have the Dry Creek trail connection from the Sam's Club village, village at the Twin Peaks east to Sunset Street. That is funded for design this year, and we're gonna be rolling that design into the design of the Sunset Street Diet and the Ken Pratt Boulevard Sunset Street uh, intersection improvements, where we received a PDOT grant for um, design and construction there. We're anticipating construction of that trail connection in 2023, hopefully. Beyond that, we have some ideas about great trail connections that we could be making. We also have some identified trail systems um, that are failing. If you ride the rough and ready greenway between just south of Skyline, between uh, Mountain View and Pace Street, that trail has been in need of repair for five years. Uh, we really need to look at our existing infrastructure and see how we wanna spend our limited resources, limited dollars, and decide how we want to move forward with this program as far as expanding our trail system as well as maintaining what we already have. I'm expecting questions on that one, so I'm gonna pause for a second. Yeah, Dan, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so you just said, we need to decide. Who's the we here? Is that we, this group? We, you guys, staff, city council? How do you get input? Scott's bike folks, you know, how do we start? <laughs> It's and a by the question. way, I really like the one, the south of Skyline High School. Every year for the uh, triathlon, it's we all stumble on that stupid path. It's awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, you know, and, and that's a great question. Ultimately, city council makes the decision. So individually, each path is decided by a city council. No. Oh. No. Council funds this project. Now, councils would certainly have the option of saying, we direct you to move forward with ABC. Right. Now, this is just, this is a budget and staff puts together the priorities based on community input, based on staff input, based on staff availability, based on whether we have the $700,000 to build this new trail or we have $300,000 to replace this trail, you know, funding availability. We, we try to strategize the funding we have av available to maximize the use of those dollars while keeping our system safe and usable. So do you have a on- It's a dance. Do you have a, a list now that we could look at or you'll show us in seven months or? Not seven months, but yes, that is one of the tasks that came out of that meeting last week is to put together a staff group to try to figure out what, you know, what we wanna do, how, how do we wanna move okay. forward? What, what is the, the best way to move forward? And I anticipate that list coming to PRAB and TAB. I think Bicycle Longmont's input was valuable and continues to be valuable. There's no great rhyme or reason. If I live in Southwest Longmont, I could think that 
some trail connection underneath 75th is right. the most important city. If I live in Northeast Longmont, the Oligarchy Ditch is the most important trail. If I live by right. high school, replacement of that trail, you have, it's, you can't just listen to the public. You have to look at the system as a whole, try to make the best decisions that we can. City council always has the opportunity to give direction. And so I would say if, if, if there is a particular segment that um, the public or the board is looking to get either replaced or built using your ability to speak with council as a board member, as a board as a whole, or as a citizen is the best way to go about that. We certainly take that in that input as city staff, but we're juggling a lot of different thoughts from a lot of different people, a lot of different vantage points. So it's never a clear science as far as this, you know, I came up with a, 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 a evaluation criteria a number of years ago. And as we got into it, it my criteria failed. Um, we, <laughs> it, it just, it, it was, it was so, it, it's so easy to poke holes in a criteria, depending on which vantage point you're coming at it from, that it's really hard to come up with a firm system to prioritize which projects should move forward. It really is a funding, staff availability, and need-based process. But the process itself is not formal, it sounds like. It's pretty low-key. We don't, as PRAB, expect to review. I mean, I don't remember doing this in the previous three years. Things just happen because you guys, no, I get it. You are the ones on the ground, but it'd be great for Bicycle Longmont or for individuals to be able to help you prioritize we we did a uh, pretty extensive public outreach about eight nine years ago um and i was talking with tom street who is the uh, engineering administrator for the transportation network and he and i worked together on that previously and he said it'd be great to do that it's not great to do that in the world of covid it's nice to get a big map on the wall uh, people you know so that i'm not going to use covid as an excuse because it's only been around for a year but I think we need to reevaluate how we engage the public. And this is not just for PRO 083 missing greenways, but it's also for TRP 105 missing sidewalk connections and T11 different transportation connections. Um, the uh, EUMC program that council adopted about three, four years ago, <coughs> you know, there's limited resources. We all know that. What's the biggest okay. for our what are we, what's, and you know, another thing that we're talking about as city staff a lot right now is equity. You know, how do we make sure that the decisions that we are making are equitable for all citizens, not just those that, um, squeaky and, wheels, right? Well, not necessarily that, but Scott, you know, looking at the, the map that you provided today in the document you sent me and knowing the people who responded, it, it's a little bit old town centric and right. uh, users. And so we don't necessarily hear from the folks that are on the outskirts of the city who are also mm -hmm. our citizens. We wanna make sure that we're making equitable decisions. So it's it's tough. I'll be the first to admit it. Go ahead, Scott. Okay, yeah, um, Steve, I think that was gonna be my, my point as well is um, in our study, new shiny things always beat out maintenance. And so, um, and also where you live uh, determines where you want things fixed. So it's hard to get to certain neighborhoods to get them to participate. Um, we've done a lot of things with the why and, and that sort of thing, but really there's not a lot of feedback unless you're really in those neighborhoods trying to get feedback from them. And so, um, yeah, it would be interesting to see if there was a better way to, to look at prioritization um, because, Maintenance is maintenance. Um, I think to some extent people expect if it's gonna be there, that should be taken care of. And that new shiny things may be secondary to making sure those people in those neighborhoods are still taken care of. Um, it's my only comment about kind of like equity and those areas that seem to get missed on the CIP or um, the ones that we're talking about here that have uh, maintenance issues and we're already looking at, you know, for me, a great shiny thing is the village at the peaks connecting to um, South Sunset, but it's near where I live and it's where I want to go. But um, the other neighborhoods that aren't being addressed, um, I think we need to look at those things that we that we have in the city that are just not the same standard. 
um, as some of the new things that we're building. Yeah, I was sort of surprised that that Village of the Peaks one was the top list from your group. I, I wouldn't yeah. think that. Yeah, I was surprised too. Yeah. <clears throat> Kathy, anything to add, David? That This is a tricky subject. Trail prioritization yeah. is really, really tricky. I do have just one quick thought <laughs> that you all will notice when you look at our projects more broadly is that right now we're sort of, we, we, we do look at, equity and moving our investments um, throughout the city. And right now I feel as though we're doing it somewhat intuitively. We're doing it through guidance with our parks, recreation and trails master plan. But if you look at this type of projects where we're trying to make connections and trying to um, go back into the city and look at the oligarchy and, you know, connections um, within the city, you'll notice that we're, we're also trying to move out. You know, we just completed the Spring Gulch number two connection out east, Steve and Daniel working on St. Brain connection. So we kind of, we kind of try to go out and then in and then out. <laughs> so we, we are trying, I, I hope you see that in, in what we submit in the CIP that we're paying attention to that. Um, and while it takes a while to get to some of these projects, we, we are trying to do that in, in how we submit our CIP and, and try to, trying to be equitably, at least geographically, but also that becomes socioeconomic and, and all of those factors. So we are trying to create that balance in our, in, in our projects. So um, we might need to um, find a way to make it a little less intuitive and a little... <laughs> A little more measurable. I think that's our goal um, citywide. Um, but we've always tried to do that and we, we look for it to continue that. And Council Member Rodriguez, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. This is, you know, I know equity is a big goal of our council and, and how we try to distribute our limited funds to make uh, a big impact for all residents. Uh, I don't. I don't know how many people are going to see me because this is still uh, set to apparently the shared screen. Anyway, uh, just a couple thoughts, real quick, in the sense that you know, uh, I think we start going through budgetary uh, conversations probably around August, um, as far as timelines are concerned, and that uh, if the body, the crab body, or individual members of crab would like to make their their uh, preferences known that's probably a better time to make them than say now when we're still months out from actually talking about the, the budget. Outside of that, you know, I also had another thought based on the conversation I was just hearing in that, you know, I find that generally speaking, a lot of the more affluent neighborhoods have future parks, as I call them, uh, they're undeveloped park lands. Uh, and so seeing how, uh, refreshes and, and some redesigns of parks are actually going into probably parks that I would say are more equitable in that concept. Um, and then as far as general, like, let's say Bicycle Longmont, um, which I just got that email today as well. Uh, those kinds of, of suggestions, again, I would suggest that they be resent closer to uh, budget conversations that the city council has to, to say and that's just my opinion from the council side of the the the, the conversation because I, I don't think i've heard anything that i would disagree with as far as what the staff has said tonight um and i don't think we necessarily uh unless prompted by either a border commission or by a good number of, of, of residents would look at certain cip's above one or another outside of just trying to see what our general budget constraints are um, based on this. And so those are my thoughts on it at this time. Um, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, I don't know if there's any questions about that, but it's, it's hard to say because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm one of seven. And so those are just kind of, I guess, my general read on it as well as I, I can't necessarily that provides you with a general consensus from the other council members until we're further down those conversations. Jeff, did you want to add something? 
Yeah, I just wanted to mention, looking at our calendar for the year, we have a comprehensive trail system on our agenda for June. So that might be a great time to lead us into what uh, Aaron was just saying for August and, and feedback to council. Thanks, that sounds great, Jeff. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, yes, didn't mean to put you on the spot there, Aaron, but um, I think you speak to the general consensus of the council as far as the need <coughs> for spreading the wealth. Uh, the next project in your packet is Dry Creek Community Park, which is a funded, um, community, partially funded project. You'll see in 2021, we have uh, money for the design of and 2022 construction of the um, replacement of the synthetic turf, or, I'm sorry, replacement of the underperforming fields at the park that are not currently being used to their most um, intense community park level that we expected, partly because of the groundwater issues that are affecting the, uh, the health of the turf. Uh, so what we're looking at is either raising the fields or more likely replacing them with some sort of a synthetic field, um, synthetic turf surfacing. You'll also see in 2024, uh, we've had discussions internally about and as I alluded to earlier, as long the longer you wait to implement a master plan that you have approved, the less community buy-in there is. Um, so we have potentially funded in 2024 uh, the design of the balance of the community park and then partial funding in 2025 for implementation of the balance of that park. So... One of the things that, and I mentioned before, that maybe we, before we move forward with that later project, we need to relook at what is actually in that park and how the community has surrounded, has evolved around that park. Trends change. Maybe we need to be doing some sort of public process to relook at what we include in that park within the budget that we have set. And so, you know, one example that I'll give is that, that sledding hill. Everyone loves the sledding hill. Everyone loves the, uh, the, the BMX or the biking hill that's there. That hill was only there as a placeholder. We just didn't want to spend the money to move that hill across the park to the western side of the park where it's supposed to be. That's where the sledding hill for the master plan is supposed to be. Um, people have um, created a sort of a cycle track or BMX area on the western part of the park because it's not being used by anything. There are other master planned um, facilities planned for that area. Do we need to relook at the master plan and maybe there's a higher and better use? I don't, I don't have the answer to that, but that's something that we need to be asking ourselves as a city, as staff, as a board, and figuring out how we move forward with that as we try to implement this master plan in, uh, in 2024. This would not be the first or last master plan that will be updated within the city. That happens all the time. Hey, did you that was part of my question. Yeah, because I mean, I've lived here for about 11, 10 years. Um, and that, you know, there, that area has just grown exponentially. And, you know, there's a lot of families, a lot of kids, a lot of potential uses for recreation facilities in that area. Um, and it's, fairly undeveloped <laughs> in terms of what it could be. I mean, I don't know if the vision is that it's, you know, a sandstone-ish facility or something smaller. I know there was at one time contemplated or, you know, at a recreation facility, a building there as well. And so I just wonder if there is a way to sort of accelerate um, that process. If you feel like, the, you know, we need to revisit, and I, I think it would make some sense to do even some kind of expedited public revisit <laughs> to that plan and see what kind of feedback you get. But I think it would be great to see, um, to see that move forward sooner than later, because there is a lot of demand. And, you know, right now it's, you know, it's kind of a big pile of dirt <laughs> and a lot of fields. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, I think our most urgent 
need is try to get those fields to the point where they can be used and heavily used to um, support the infrastructure we built around them, the parking and the restroom and all that other sort of stuff. Um, the rec center there is a very logical thing, but that is something that's not going to be approved by, it's, it's going to have to come through a ballot initiative. It's going to have to come through the efforts and, uh, and our staff worked on several years ago and try to get the public to buy off on building some sort of a recreational facility there. Cause it's going to be in the 20 to $30 million range. That's outside of our capital, typical capital budget. Other amenities that are in the master plan for that park are another outdoor recreational pool just east of the, I'm sorry, just west of the possible recreation facility that would help relieve some of the uh, impact on Sunset Pool. Uh, Sunset Pool was built in 63, 4, 5. Jeff, correct me, somewhere in there. And 64. 4, yeah. So uh, that's, that's, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it served its purpose, but it's certainly up there as far as its use. And so we certainly have, as a town of, in 64, we were at 45,000 people. Now we're at 100,000 people. We probably need another outdoor um, pool facility. That was the location we selected for that. Um, east of there, there were uh, two or three ball fields. There were out, outdoor handball courts. There was a maintenance facility. There was a select hill. There was a, a, a um, interactive water area. I think with a decade's worth of reflection, we could probably look at that and improve that um, based, again, based on trends, based on development around that area. With the creation of the synthetic turf fields, there is talk about creating those, making those fields lit because you can program those fields 11 months out of the year, especially when it's dark in the winter months when it's warm enough to be playing on them. I feel as though there needs to be some sort of a public process around that just to notify the public that that's what we're thinking because although community parks and on every document that uh, the, the plots and development plans for those houses, it does say that community parks typically have lit ball fields. We would wanna make sure the public understands what we're trying to do and the, the lighting technology has come a long way since I think <coughs> people think and so the cutoff technology is there where it's not gonna adversely impact um, not only the neighboring homes, but also the wildlife along the Dry Creek Corridor. I'm confident we can, we can uh, overcome that. That being said, that might be a lead in to talk to the public about what they might wanna see at this park that's different from the master plan that has already been adopted by city council back in 2007 or eight. So I could see that happening in the next 18 months, that conversation, but um, as far as redoing the master plan, I think that'd be something that we'd be, we'd be pushing to 2024 when we have the funding and possible staff time to, to work on that. Does that make sense? What would it take to encourage that public engagement to happen? Oh, well, we well, COVID aside, we would have public meetings and we would invite the folks out to whether it's on site, whether it's at Silver Creek High School, one of the elementary schools or middle schools, um, we would. But I mean, do you need, is there anything we can do to make that happen? Like encourage the city to think about doing that on a faster time frame? is my question. Or is it just, it'll happen when it happens? <laughs> That's not my decision. Um, David, I'll pass that to you. Still with us? Yeah, it's, still here. So, there you go. so Paige, I think recommendations from this board definitely help. And um, the thing that I think we're always looking at is if we want to do that, we can be encouraged to that, but it means something else has to get pushed back. I mean, with the, with the staff that um, we have and the projects we have and the CIP we have, it, it just really means that what do we want to not do so we can move this forward? And it's a prioritization that's just like with the, the trails piece that um, we need to make sure that we are engaging everyone because um, that, that will have a ripple effect to those other communities and user groups that um, 
we're expecting something in another location. So this input definitely helps us as we look at moving forward, but um, it, it really is, it, it all has that, that effect of having to make a change someplace else at this point. Great, Manoj, why don't you yeah, go ahead? Um, Steve, uh, what part of field is being planned to uh, change to the synthetic turf? Is it the, the whole park or just part of the park? Basically the area that's below the slopes down there where all the soccer and um, activities are supposed to be taken be taking place okay um, but it says other the, activities that it says the detention pond to to replace so detention pond is further uh, north side of field the, Steve, i think the question is the lower area cricket okay yes no we would not take away cricket okay it'll incorporate cricket in whatever we do and you would be one of the stakeholders, you, the cricket group would be one of the stakeholders that would be part of that conversation. Where right. not, there's effort to try to eliminate cricket. Tell me, can cricket happen on synthetic turf? Yes, it can. Yes. Okay. And Good. the cricket would be definitely happy to replace. Good. There you go. Yes, no, that, that's great. Yeah, there's no intent to change um, the potential uses it's just trying to make it usable more usable for bigger user groups because our community parks are designed and built and funded to be active intensive recreation areas currently we're not we as a city are not using that in that intensive way because of the status of that turf absolutely so want, yeah that's what that community park is for got it thank you mm -hmm. Let's see the next, hey, look at that. Next project is PRO 186. I'm gonna let Kathy speak for a while and take a rest. <laughs> well, this project is the kind of what I call the park renewal program, um, park infrastructure rehabilitation and replacement. And, and this, uh, this CIP is, is one of those um, in ongoing programs for rehabbing our parks. and. You know, it's been in place for a long time. It really got a boost when we passed the park and greenway maintenance fee um, back in 2014, I think. So it got a lot more funding and it was supported by the Parks Recreation and Trails Master Plan to take care of what we have. Um, so we've done a lot with this CIP. Um, right now, um, this year, um, Affalter Park upgrades is under construction right now. Um, and that is replacing the restroom shelter pump building. There's a big hole out there right now if you've been by. <laughs> um, but uh, that's under construction. But it also upgraded the, the ball field that's out there. That is um, done and ready for play this summer. Um, it also upgraded uh, ADA improvements. Hopefully when this project is done, it'll be fully ADA compliant. So there's, you know, sidewalk improvements, improvements to get into the tennis court and basketball court um, and things like that. The playground um, was replaced back in 2016. So that's not a part of this current project, but that was done. So um, that's underway. Also this year funding is gonna do the Lou Miller Park Renewal. Um, that's, um, the design is almost complete. I hope to get that bid soon and have that under construction this summer. Um, and then um, this project also, we talked about the bridge, um, this uh, at Spangler Park. Um, since both this project and the bridge replacement project are used, utilizing public improvement and um, park renewal funding, meaning the park and greenway maintenance fee fund, um, the Spangler Bridge is actually funded out of this one um, this year. So again, that's funded this year. And then Upcoming projects, um, we kind of look at, we prioritize annually, and I get together with staff, um, primarily parks maintenance staff, to really kind of relook at it every year and make sure that um, we're hitting the highest need 
things because sometimes it can be a whole park renewal project like garden acres was a big one out of this um, and then sometimes it's just gee we need to redo the <laughs> the fencing or a playground or or something really specific in a project but real quick um, some of the upcoming needs and I don't have them in specific years yet I apologize but the high priorities that we see right now include Hover Park um, again, Steve mentioned the sandstone ranch playground, just the pieces that have had to be removed um, because of wear and tear. Um, Sunset Price Park, um, there's some renewal needs with the playground and the shelter, um, but we might look at that more of a, as a master plan update because this is another CIP project that's affecting the park. Um, the tank the water tank, not the water tower, but the water tanks at that site are, are going to be replaced. And it's gonna be one tank that's smaller. And so that kind of opens up some opportunities at that site. So we're gonna look at that. Um, Thompson Park, the playground and the shelters need some renovation. Um, garden Acres, something we didn't get done was replacement of the sports lights and the parking lot lights to hopefully go to LED on that. Um, Union Reservoir, the, we, the existing um, site there really needs some um, TLC in terms of restroom upgrades um, and things like that just to serve the existing users out there. Clark Centennial Park is, is one that's on the, on the radar for kind of looking at that park holistically and um, doing a park renewal project there. Um, I, I mentioned the Roosevelt Park playground, Roth Rock Dell Park. Um, we did a playground replacement there, but the restroom needs to be looked at, ADA compliance, kind of safety. There's some trip hazards in the sidewalk. Um, Golden Ponds, the restrooms and shelters. And, and a lot of this can be site furniture. Just, you know, we just need to go back in those places and reinvest. Um, Pratt Park, the playground, um, and other um, ADA type improvements, and Valley Park. So <laughs> that was kind of a quick laundry list of just what we've been talking about among staff that, that are kind of on the radar. But again, we just kind of look at it every year. Sometimes we have to go back out and revisit these sites to go, okay, which is the most need? And again, we, we try to focus on safety, ADA compliance, and, and just anything that, gosh, if we don't get in there and fix this, we might have to decommission it, <laughs> you know, um, we're trying to stay. And over the years, I really feel like we've gotten over this hump where we're able to keep up. We did a lot of catching up. Over, I, I would say over the last eight years or so, we've been trying to catch up. Um, and now I feel like we're in a position where we are sort of keeping up. Um, so, that's that project, if there's any questions. I have one, Paige. Yep, go ahead. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> That's okay. So uh, we had a call, uh, public to, invited to be heard October. Um, Patsy was her first name, and I can't remember her last name, talking about tennis backboards and the dearth in the city and the uh, unusability of at least one of them, Car Park. Um, is this where we would perhaps insert such a thing, uh, replace the one at Car Park, add one somewhere? Uh, I just, you know, I'm looking through the list and I don't know how you get an individual item in, but when, we, when she spoke, our response was the CIP process and trying to get this going. And when she heard it's a five-year process, I think she about blew a gasket to me the next weekend. Like, it's going to take five years to get a tennis backboard. So I don't know how this works, but that was a request. And I know uh, based on the tennis folks at Quail that they would all love to have more tennis back backboards. While I'm on the tennis subject, on your other CIP list that starts on page 27, Number PRO uh, 150 is a tennis shelter at Quail. And it, last year, I thought that was going to happen in 2021, but now it says TBD. 
So did that fall off the list somehow? I'm just thinking if you guys go down to Quail on a weekend day or even a weekday, nice weekday, that place is packed. So there's a lot of gung ho going on that we could satisfy. Well, I apologize. I wasn't at the meeting where the backboards came up. I do remember it being discussed. I would venture to say, and I, I don't want to um, go against any direction that was given, a single item like a, a backboard being repaired, probably not reaching the CIP level in and of itself. Okay. <laughs> Um, and do I thought I recalled our maintenance staff kind of getting that on their radar where, gee, if it's already there and it just needs some maintenance in order to be used, that's one thing. Um, the other part of it is, um, you know, if, if there are courts that don't currently have backboards, then that's kind of a change of use where we want to have some public input, you know, gee, is that going to, you know, cause problems with other uses, things like that. So when we're adding things, we'd certainly want to have a conscious discussion and ask more than just a couple people who are making the request to make sure um, we're implementing the right improvements, you know. Um, so so I, I don't know if you have anything more to say about those car backboard, that car backboard request, but I wouldn't think that it rises. It, it could rise to a CIP if it were combined with more, you know, more improvements that need to be done at that site, possibly. Well, the sighted car has individual one by six boards that run vertically. They are all warped. So when you hit against it, you get a nice scattergun return. Um, so I don't think it's repairable in the sense of pounding the boards down. It's more likely you'd have to replace it. The model nowadays, I'd say, is the ones at the Niwot High School courts. They're beautiful, and I don't know what the material is they use, but it's some sort of composite. So I have no clue what such a thing costs, but I think Patsy's comment and folks that I see in the tennis community is that we need more of them in the city. And so whether that's on an existing court or a separate thing like at Affalter, I don't know whether which is better use wise, um, but that's, I just threw that in there because this seems like the uh, our, the the project number where that would fit if it got to a ten thousand dollar kind of thing. And then yeah. separately was that shelter at Quail that has its own that looks like it's changed dates or whatever. It went from twenty twenty one I thought to TBD. Yeah, and just to, to complete the, yeah, the car thing, it could be maintenance, it could be a CIP project. And again, as you can see how many projects we have, it just really becomes a staff time issue. Can a maintenance staff person get to that type of project? Can a CIP project manager? And, you know, if we, if we jump to those project requests, you know, it takes time away from these other projects that we're trying to, to work on. So we try to find that balance of, you know, where can we, fit it in. Um, and then, you know, I think I'll let Steve speak to the quail project since he was working on that. Yeah. Sorry, Scott, I'm going to jump in before you uh, get your hand um, unraised. Okay. Dan, the, the, yeah, you know, be, the funds for the quail tennis court project were pulled when we went into COVID. We're coming out of COVID. The funds are still there. I'll be honest. There's only two of us. There's only <laughs> so many people that can that can can manage the design and construction of these things. They are complicated. They do take you know where that shelter is going to go. There's a subsurface irrigation system that would need to be reworked. And um, yeah, we have the the funding for it. We are trying to prioritize the projects as best we can. Mm -hmm with the resources, when I say resources, I mean staff. I, I, I separate funding and resources. Funding is money, resources is staff. And there's only so many uh, things that we can be working on at the same time. And sometimes things take a lot more of our time than we expected. Resilient Same Frame Project is a great example where uh, I've been involved and Danielle has been involved a lot in that project because it's really important and it's the biggest <laughs> Project we have going on within the city right now. And so we are trying to prioritize how much effort we make toward 
um, improving our park infrastructure as much as we can. The one thing I would say as far as tennis is that for the tennis community within Longmont, we did just in the past three, four years, build a 10 court USTA complex for the tennis community that we spent two and a half, $3 million on that um, took a lot of staff time and funds and things. And so I understand the need for backboards. Um, I think we can look into any sort of maintenance that we want to do at car. I was laughing at myself because I was thinking that might just might just make you a better tennis player. If the ball comes back to you with a funny bounce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it wasn't a criticism at all, Steve, and that's fine. I just want to be able to give feedback. Uh, I appreciate so, it. No, I hey, appreciate the money's it. there. It's on the list. That's what it's I'll tell folks and it'll happen. How soon is TBD? So we'll see what happens. That's fine. Thanks. And you, you, you can't imagine how many requests we get from the community on awesome projects. We would love to. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Phil, whether it's pickleball, whether it's tennis, whether it's bike skills, whether it's BMX, whether it's inline hockey, you know, all these different things are, there is not a thing that people are suggesting that is wrong. It's just, there's only so many things we can do. And as David alluded to, when we make a decision to move forward on one thing, we are pulling resources and funds away from another thing. Okay. It was more of an info thing. I didn't mean to push. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. You're, you're fine. I, I didn't take it. It's good to hear. Go ahead, David. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate, Dan, that it's not pushing at all. It really is a story that we have to do a better job telling because, um, and it's not just the community. It, it's internally. Jeff has great ideas and senior center has great ideas. And like, well, we'll bring the dollars and we'll, we'll help get contract and all those things have those those pieces that Steve and Kathy be involved with the hub fits in the overall park and then we have an asset that timber has to manage so uh, it sounds very bureaucratic and sometimes it feels that way but um it really comes down to just the people I have during these projects and how we can do a better job of saying we'd love to do that um even when people bring the dollars to say we will help you with that it really means that Steve or Kathy have to leave another project to come over and do that it's, it's a piece of I've been struggling with them and internally um, as well, because other, like I say, other work groups have the exact same request to this. So not a bad, it's a great question, Dan. And one that, like you say, if you're trying to get information back, um, if you can help us share that message that, it, that to be determined is as fast as we can get some stuff done, we're gonna move on to the next one. And we even talked about how we could prioritize some of those smaller ones to see if we could bring in other resources to help. Because Steve, when Steve said resources, he meant dollars, but I'm looking at, are there other people like just bringing engineering to do one of his? Are there things we can do um, to see if we can try to get some of those one-offs that um, are a great idea, but we just don't have the staffing to deal with right now? So again, I appreciate the question, Dan, and I hope that really doesn't feel yeah, like I'm we're fine. pushing back great. either. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Scott. Um, just to, to get to uh, backboards, I've talked to Timber in the last couple of weeks about the backboards, uh, Dan, and um, they're either ordered or in the process of being ordered. So hey. it was it was going to be a project for some scouts, and he said it's so easy to do that that staff is just going to do it. So the scouts are going to take care of the Affalter Park, um, uh, like board there, the big sixty foot you know backboard there, but a lot of those other wooden ones are going to be coming um, composite, and I guess there are going to be new ones added to it. So I think that's what you could. I hadn't heard that. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank sure. you, Scott. And that's what I didn't want to step out in front of Timber because uh, he did have a scout project working on the one. I know that. And I yep. just saw the email the other day. So, Scott, thanks for confirming that. Um, and that's what a place, Dan, that, you know, Steve and Kathy talk about. Some of these other ones that um, we can take down to that o &M level and say this really isn't a CIP project. But Steve and Kathy will remind me, they sometimes, they'll, they'll need someone to manage that project still. I mean, you need a contract, you need to watch the kids, how does that really work in? And how can we use that? So I started talking about those other resources, using Tim and his staff to potentially manage some of those other, other projects, using engineering to manage some of those other projects. So we're, we're trying to be as creative as possible. Thank I you, love, Scott. Uh, I love that Scott is a cycling advocate and a tennis savant. Um, and I also love <laughs> Not no, like high school, the state champs, as far as their facilities, they're supposed to have good facilities. They're the state champs. <laughs> <laughs> there were a few more um, 
projects on the list. And Jeff, you had a couple of them. I'm not sure how quickly you want to go through or if at all, but the Callahan house improvements and uh, the. Yep. And community, the community services, uh, specialized equipment, Callahan house, these, and these two are, they fall under the category of maintenance. Callahan house uh, became a part of recreation uh, a few years ago. We need to do work on uh, concrete in the driveway and uh, the other two are tied to replacing windows and fixing the curved leaded window. Uh, if you could go to the next one, Aurora. So this one is really a community services wide uh, CIP, which includes not only recreation, but the library, museum, senior services. And uh, we have 511,000 plus dollars this year of that, 421,000 of that is for recreation uh, equipment. And what we found over the years was that we were never able to replace our equipment in a way that would uh, keep people coming back to our facilities without replacing some of these recreation things. It would have an impact on our cost recovery during normal times, not not necessarily right now, but it, it's a wide variety of things ranging from scoreboards at the rec center, rollout, replacement of rollout uh, bleachers, sound replacement of the sound system at the memorial building, work on the playground outside of the memorial building, which was tied to our preschool program when we did it. We're looking at taking the playground out and making it more of a program area with uh, some of the playground type of uh, surfacing. There's replacement of some of the um, fixtures out at uh, Sandstone Ranch. And it also includes replacing the ice mats uh, where the glycol flows uh, to keep the ice uh, frozen uh, to replace that also. So that's all I had unless uh, somebody had a question. Okay, okay Aurora. Aurora. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Aurora, to the next one. Oh. Yeah, next slide. And I'm just going to, so these are engineering projects um, that Kathy and I sort of keep track of because they do impact what we do as well. TRP 105 is missing sidewalks, as I alluded to earlier. We're trying to make connections for pedestrians and cyclists. I don't care whether it's along a road as a sidewalk or along a, a Creek, as it's a greenway, we're trying to make sure we're using best using our dollars to provide the best connections that we can make within the city. And so there's constant overlap between T105 and PRO um, 83. Next slide, Aurora. Um, this is the Boston Avenue Bridge over the St. Frank River, just so you're aware of it. It is the um, we are at about 60% design with this bridge. And this, uh, we just this week closed the underpass at Boston Avenue, um, right there by the left hand brewery. That underpass will remain closed for a couple of years now. Uh, with the, the, there's a, the next slide shows the RSVP project. The RSVP project is um, active downstream of that bridge as well as upstream of that bridge with some utility re relocation projects. We should be going out to bid uh, and starting construction in the fall of 21 for the Boston Avenue Bridge project. That should take about a year. So it'll be a year, year plus. So that it'll be late 22, early 23 before that underpass is opened again. But uh, natural resources staff is looking at those plans and making sure that we're going to be building back infrastructure that will allow for a safe trail um, underpass at that location. Next slide. Spring Gulch 2 drainage. Um, that I alluded to that earlier. That's the connection from Union Reservoir and County Road 26 down to Highway 119 and Sandstone Ranch. Uh, we're working, we have funds to um, finalize the design in 2021, hopefully of that last phase, the most complicated part of that, which is an underpass underneath the uh, BNSF 
railroad there just west of the Smuckers plant. Um, we had a meeting last week and I think there was a general consensus among staff that this is one of the highest priorities for trail transportation projects within the city uh, just to try to make that final connection from Northeast Longmont down to Sandstone Ranch and the same frame Greenway. If you really, if you look at a map of the city and you look at the, the way the greenways and the trails work, Northeast Longmont is really segmented. It does not have a lot of connectivity. So connecting this area of town out to Union, Sandstone, the St. Frank Greenway, and back into town or eventually east out to St. Frank State Park is really a, a very fantastic, exciting project to complete. And so we're hoping we, we don't have the funding set up yet, but we're trying to, we'll be looking to prioritize that in the next year, two, three of, uh, of the CIP. So as we bring the 2022, 2026 CIP forward, you'll see where we end up with trying to fund that project. Hey, Steve, could I jump in real quick? Please, To please. point out that in that meeting, um, this is where our budgets get tight. And they really, yeah, good point. really talked about, do we want to prioritize something like PRO 83, all of the connections, or do we want to really focus our resources and get this type of project done? So I just wanted you all to think about that in terms of, how we fund things with limited funding availability, that's the give and take that we kind of have to really evaluate and could really use input on. Um, and, and, you know, those surveys like Bicycle Longmont really help in, in that regard in submitting the CIP. But I really felt that pull when we really were, were wanting to complete the Spring Gulch number two greenway out to Sandstone. It's like, oh, well, we also want to do PRO 83. What do we do? Right. We fund it all do we do? Do we do that trail or do we and not do any EMUCs or oligarchy trail or dry creek trail? Or do we let that sit and do these other ones? And so that's, you know, those are the choices that we're always tasked with. And again, ultimately council makes that decision. But um, we value input from the public as well as the boards. Last slide, Aurora, is uh, RSVP, I believe, D39, yeah. I think, I hope you're all up to speed on this. I'm happy to talk about this with any questions, but I think you're all aware of the efforts we're making along the river corridor. Um, just so you are aware, the Dickens Farm Nature Area project that um, last year won the American Public Works Association Colorado Chapter Award for large projects, uh, we have submitted and hope to hear in April for a national APWA award for that project for the five to $20 million project. So um, I thought it was a pretty good application, a lot of help from a lot of different people outside and inside the city. And so we'll see, but hopefully we have some good, good news for the board in, um, and for council and the public in May. Roar, next slide. Yeah, sorry, two slides. And then, you know, here's where we're, Kathy and I are going through, and Kathy, just turn your mic on and we can go back and forth. Yeah, you know, we talked about St. Vrain Greenway, phase 12, phase 13, west, east. You wanna talk about Union Reservoir Trail, where you are with that? Yeah, so I think the purpose for this um, spreadsheet, in addition to the CIPs we went through, is to point out that the CIP is, like Steve said, is 21 to 25. And so this spreadsheet does represent some projects that we're working on that have carry forward funding. So you're not gonna see it if you just look at the 21 to 25 CIP, but really these are on our work plan this year because there's carry forward funding. So the Union Reservoir Trail is one of those. That's, I haven't started it yet because I'm still, I've got about three park renewal projects that are a higher priority. Um, but I hope to get going on the design by the end of this year. And this is the loop trail around Union Reservoir. And it has, it's kind of funded in phases, but it is fully, it's fully funded except the Southern portion, um, uh, just uh, along County Road 26 is funded with a transportation project to improve County Road 26. 
that project is currently unfunded. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm confident if we keep going with the trail um, that we'll, you know, we'll eventually get there and get that full loop. Dan? I think this sounds way cool, especially after our last summer's Macintosh Lake experience with the loop trail around there. This sounds awesome. How is this trail, quote, non-fee? Right. It'll be outside the fenced area for Union Reservoir. So that'll be part of the design. Ah, interesting. Not Thank you. Into the, you will not go into the fee area of Union Reservoir to use this trail. And but and it'll it sounds like it'll combine with this new one that you just talked about, Steve. The so yeah, you can get to it and walk the loop. That sounds awesome. I think that'll be great. I agree. Yeah, we won't use snipers. We'll use fences. But yes, it'll be uh, it'll be separate from the fee area. Okay, I get it now. Thanks. Um, just an update. You know, and some of this stuff is all in your updates. And I'm hoping to go to bid in the fall on on that project. Sandstone Ranch Phase 4, we talked about already, as well as Dry Creek Fields. McIntosh Lake Phase 4 is an interesting one that we've just talked about a little bit recently, is that um, th this is a trailhead at sort of the southwest corner of the facility off of 17th Avenue west of Airport Road, if you can imagine. It's not a huge trailhead. It's probably 20 cars. It is, there's a trail connection up through the wetlands, a little boardwalk, and then connecting to the trail that goes around McIntosh. It will necessitate a sidewalk. In, in retro, th this, was, this is already designed. Paula designed this right before she left. She gave me the design documents. We had other priorities. We put this aside. We don't feel as though we can effectively build this unless we build a sidewalk on the north side of 17th from this trailhead over to the intersection of airport and 17th so people can safely cross 17th Avenue and get to this trailhead. But this might be something we want to move forward with because of the angst that we're having with all the parking in use around McIntosh. This could create some more parking for... Um, you know, for users around that area. So that's the sort of feedback we would love to hear from the board is that th this is a priority. I see Dan's already there, but um, this is the sort of thing that, that, that is, we have a completed design, 80%. We need to design the last 20% of the trail connection on the north side of the, the, uh, the road. There'll be some coordination with Boulder, Boulder County, but it's something that could be done if the, um, but right now it's not assigned to either of us. It's just sitting, sort of sitting there. Um, David had his hand up for a minute. Did you still oh, want to say please. something, David? Your screen's off, David. Your mount, your mic's off, also. Yeah, Steve and Kathy. Um, real quick, I just think for the group here, since you and I just had these conversations today, as we start looking, this is a long list of projects. I'm seeing some things in kind of order here, but I think since you both have your mics on right now. Um, would you just kind of lay out those those kind of three to five projects you have like lined out right now that we've kind of set up the priorities and you can see how this all fits together that it really starts dropping those but steve would you go and then kathy i, I think we just hit those today you want me to go first steve Yes, uh, Kathy, go you just kind of, yeah, go ahead. Just kind of hit those ones so people know that as we're working through these, these are the ones that are on your place right now, and those have to kind of come off as you move forward. Sure. Well, real quick, I mentioned Appleton Park upgrades is under construction. I'm working on Lou Miller Park renewal, um, getting, it, you know, getting it out and going, the Spangler Park bridge replacement. And then the other two upcoming are the Union Reservoir Trail. And then we haven't talked about yet Fox Meadows Neighborhood Park is fully funded with carry forward funds. So again, you didn't see that in all of our sheets, but that is on my work plan to get going on the design and public process, get it go, get it launched by the end of the year and hopefully move through that design process and, and get going on that. So those are kind of my five top priorities right now this year. And I'm and Steve. trying to finish the design of Workman and start construction on Workman, finish the land acquisition and start design on St. Brain Greenway phase 12. 
heading west to Airport Road and start construction, finish the design of Clover Meadows, and then depending on developer activity, if you remember, I need to have the developer to create the roads around the site before I can build it. Um, get that done and maybe start the construction there, prairie dog relocation from that site, and then just coordination with RSVP and, and other things. So yeah, you're right, David, we didn't need to go through that whole other um, spreadsheet. And the reason I just did that again is that's where, as you start looking at long list of projects, I think Dan, you started this off saying you wish to put stuff up there. These are all things that I, I think all have high value um, as a supervisor and just trying to be protective of my staff a little bit. That list to me is just overwhelming what Stephen Caffey had in one year. Um, and I start throwing other stuff in there. If you feel pushback, it is probably for me. And just how, how do we do that with the staff um, to know that they have these other projects that are really out there that they know their supervisor is saying, we need to get these done. So I just want to proud to kind of know what they really have on their plate as they're looking and enthusiastically looking at all these other upcoming projects. So with that, I'm gonna end the presentation and open up to any PRAB members or anybody else for questions. Any questions? Thank you. I really appreciate you guys taking time to go through all those with us. It's always really helpful to both recall the process and also see the scope of things you are considering. And, and actually Paige, one thing I would say is that, you know this is the March meeting. We're gonna be meeting in April, 11th ish somewhere in there. We'd love to hear from the board individually or as a group. If you want us to move forward with something, that would be great. Uh, you know, by the time it gets to city council in August, that is good input for city council, but for staff that's trying to build the, the um, CIP, it's great to hear that input up front. And so if we wanna put this as an old business item in uh, the April meeting and hear back from board members as far as what you're trying to uh, uh, accomplish, I'm, I'm open to that and I'll be there for it. If I could just reiterate on that too, I think that the board weighing in and I was um, glad to hear Mayor Pro Tem mentioned the fact that you know this comes up and there's other opportunities for the for council to hear this, but for us to start this conversation now is important because, um, again, as Steve knocks off all those projects on his list this year, um, Wortman, self Clover Basement, um, St. Brain 12, Prairie Dog Relocations, we really have those conversations coming up. Is Sandstone Ranch Phase 4 or Dry Creek the next piece that we really need to look at on, on those projects? I know Jeff would probably, you know, shoot me some glances right now on what he thinks is. So, I, I think, you know, if we hear back from these boards, that all weighs in that, that conversation. But um, there is that next phase coming up, and we do have to make some decisions. Great. Uh, Sue? So just to be clear, you're saying you would like to hear what we wish you would prioritize, or just, is that what you're saying for the next phase? Yeah, I'd wishes, desires, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Down from a, a tennis backboard up to a rec center. Like, yeah, I, I, this is what, this is the chance. We'd love to hear what you'd like guess, to do. Oh, I was just going to say what I was going to suggest maybe to Jeff and David for our next conversation about the agenda for old business. I think it'd be great if board members could take a look at these and, and identify if there's something that you feel we should consider recommending further action as a board. I mean, I think we're all free individually to communicate our preferences, but if you feel like there's something that we should prioritize or communicate a, a higher level of priority as a board, it'd be great to talk about that as an old business item um, at our next meeting. Another suggestion is also, um, now that you've kind of heard the spiel and can absorb what you've heard today is to maybe revisit your park Re recreation and trails master plan and kind of think about what you heard tonight and think about whether, you know, you think we're in line with it or you think we're missing or we're getting off track or whatever. But I know, you know, it's always good to kind of revisit those guiding documents and kind of look at, you know, how are we doing, you know, um, and are we on the right track from what, because that's really the community's guide to us for this. 
I think if you go collectively, that will be good rather than individually. Okay, so any just, other uh, questions? Oh, Sue, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Of course, I would like another rec center, but I guess what I'm saying is so, for example, people have been waiting for a second outdoor swimming pool. So, you're saying we should not individually or as a group then discuss, I mean, there, there's so many priorities. I guess what I'm saying is I, I would hate to be throwing things at you when you're already overwhelmed. That's sort of where I'm, you know, I have a, I have a big list of priorities, but, but that's not necessarily what you want, I don't think, or what. I'm gonna, I'll start this in my um, page, just, just real quick, because I think it could get overwhelming pretty quick. I think. I'm, I'm hoping Jeff jumps in here so he has a lot more experience doing this, but I think we want to engage this group. I think looking at that, that long list of projects and knowing that we have um, a pretty much approved direction to go and projects we have to get to. And if we're getting to that point where now we're out to that, that phase, which when Steve gets done with his, we know we have a dry creek coming up and a, and a um, sandstorm race phase four. And if this group comes together and says, we really think this is something we would like to support, I think that little bit maybe even an organized direction that could help us make those decisions. I think that would still weigh in, as we said, we don't have a, a full voting system because Jeff is going to bring his rec users perspective. But if there's something that, that this group specifically feels is an important piece that um, it lines up with, and thank you, Kathy, she's my keeper of the documents because I always think that's a great idea. And she's like, look back at your, your, your documents and see what you know people recommended. But looking at those and seeing where we're going, are we on track? And if we're at the point where now we have a little flexibility and this board feels that um, outdoor swimming or um, ball field, baseball fields or um, synthetic turf fields really have a high value to the community that we may have missed since those documents were created. I, I think that would be a great opportunity for us to have some direction from this group. And I, I would like to see if Jeff think that's worth, but it would, it would help me. We have done that in the past. Steve, you might remember when we did the CIP.ocracy voting, where we listed all the projects by different categories, and then the board could vote on a certain number of those, and then that helped set some of the priorities. This was all pre-master plan times, and we, we could maybe bring that back at the next meeting for discussion to see if we could present that and if you're interested in doing doing the dotocracy or some type of voting. I'd be open to that, Jeff. Uh, you're right. Uh, but I actually think I would defer to Kathy's recommendation is to review the master plan because that's our guiding document. I worry if we meet in April and say, yeah, we should do a dotocracy and then we go to the May meeting and do it. Staff is already has to have their CIP stuff in by mid, mid to late April. Like it's it's we're we're done with our submittals and it's moved up to leadership and 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 um, so we don't have it. We can certainly deliver the message forward. Right. We have less ability to manipulate the numbers and the timing and things if we if we wait for that. I don't. I, I really think that a good conversation, whether it happens this month or next month, a good conversation with the board, as far as what your priorities are, you know, try to list your top three. We've given you trails, pools, tennis, parks. I, I think part of it, though, Steve, is there might be some things that aren't even on the list. Good point. Yeah, great point. And, and we certainly could come to the meeting next month prepared to lead the board in the dotocracy effort. I always forget that your deadline is a lot different than all the rest of us because of the number of things that you guys have to do. Right. But, you know, I, and my guess is the, a number of the board members have projects that they'd like us to consider that we haven't even got on paper anywhere. And that'd be fan. That's fantastic. Yeah, I would. I would love to hear that. And you're. You just so the board knows. Like I'm looking at my calendar. It's March eighth. 
end of March, early April, I'm almost done with CIP. Yeah. And I don't see it again until council adopts it in October. Yeah. Um, there's some adjustments. Just so you understand the, the time it takes to develop that through the different sections of the hierarchy of the city, as well as to um, balance the, the financial side of it. And that's, that's a big part of it. But yeah, Jeff, we can come up with some sort of a dotocracy sort of um, mechanism that we can- well, I might uh, ask, oh, sorry, I was saying I might ask the board members if they, um, does anyone have a preference to between you know, doing some additional review and identification coming with maybe one, two, one or two things that you think are a top priority that the board should com consider recommending versus would you rather do something like, uh, I don't know, I haven't done the dotocracy voting, although I'm intrigued by the name, um, but it sounds like more, you know, looking at the whole, a much longer list potentially and voting, um, some level of preferences that way. So just asking the board members, which of those sounds like something you would like to spend your time on in April? Nicholas? Uh, yeah, thank you, Paige. So my my challenge here is that, uh, you know, we're being asked for like open-ended feedback of what's on our mind. Really hard to do, obviously. And so a little bit of structure and, uh, guidance on the types of questions that we want to answer would be helpful. And I think um, the, I don't, can't I'm not gonna pretend to even know how to pronounce that word, uh, but some type of like, you know, uh, list of questions at a high level that we need to, to cover. And, you know, I think it, it was helpful to go through the, the information in the packet, but a lot of the, the good juicy stuff that I really learned from the most was, uh, you know, things that Steve, you had voiced over while discussing each of those items. And so, um, you know, for example, um, you know, the Montgomery Farms land acquisition item, right? Like uh, we had this opportunity in front of us. Um, you know, I wouldn't have gotten that just by looking at the, the packet itself. And so I think I've, I've said my piece and hopefully that, that, that helps uh, and addresses your question, Paige, but uh, some structure would be, would be helpful. And Paige and the board, I, I can just email me if you have questions and I'm happy to respond. I, I'm, this is what I do. I like doing it. So, just a reminder: email it only to Steve and David and I, not to the other board members. You can email me too. Um, and I just, I don't have the answer to this, but one thing that I'm hearing is is the interest in these bigger endeavors, the rec center, the outdoor pool, and you know, Steve said it quickly that that's not really just a CIP submission. And, and, and I would really, I don't know the, the answer, but just the board's creative discussion and creative thought about how to, you know, move this city towards something bigger like that. Um, the city has a lot of big needs <laughs> and, and interests and desires. And so, um, you know, I think we're not gonna get those things out of a dot voting prioritization those are just kind of beyond kind of what steve and i can submit in the cip when we get to that level so and so be from the board some creative discussion about how to how to launch an initiative like that is kind of what i'm hearing from some of you in here. right we have in in may the potential rec facility for the diadocracy to work I think it has to be based on the projects that are already in the mix. It, we couldn't really add those big projects like Kathy said, but it might help set priority of the things that are in there and, and we may not be able to do it all, but I think it's a, a great discussion. Any other comments? So if I'm, I mean, I'm also... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just to say, you would like a list of projects. And then that's sort of what that page 34 to 37 is. But with projects that are already funded, we can delete the projects that are already funded, add the projects that are out there in the five-year CIP, clarify where they are in the years, and then you guys could... 
make recommendations based on that. And I'll just tell you, dotocracy is not so fun digitally because usually when we did the rec center, I'll, I'll never forget this uh, Quail Campus. We were doing the the public process for the 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 rec center, and there were people offering because. You know, there were people saying kids should not have dots and they're not taxpayers. There were people offering $5 for dots so they could add more dots to their thing. It was a, it was quite the scene. It was really, it was a really interesting process. So it, it's being digital. We could certainly deliver something and maybe we can do it two weeks before your meeting to deliver something to you. So you guys can think about it and figure out where your, your, your desires lie. If that's something you want. Yeah, it seems like two different levels of conversation. So maybe there's a follow up at the next one that is more focused on um, do we have any differences of, of opinion from where the priorities lie right now about upcoming projects within the scope that you have presented? And so I think then we can look at your list and your time schedule and say, hey, we as a group feel like this piece is more important or needs to be moved up. But then I think the bigger conversation that you were articulating, Kathy, is something that we would um, talk about in May, potentially, based on our calendar. Um, it could be the rec facility, but it could be just more about what is that? Is there some bigger vision related to recreation, open space, trails that we as a board really want to advocate for? So maybe we start with the more tangible projects that are um, potentially at least in the pipeline now and then move to the bigger vision in the next meeting. Does that make sense? Sue? Yeah. Oh, you're on mute, Sue. We can't hear you, Sue. I misunderstood. When you said, Steve, throw anything out there, I, I, I thought you meant like anything. And that's why I said that's just too overwhelming. So we're gonna focus on the unfunded projects. That's great, I agree. I think you're focused on prioritizing the projects. Okay. Prioritizing the unfunded projects. And I'm always open to some crazy ass idea. You know, that, that's how great things come about. So yeah, you know, don't, don't be shy. If you think there's something else, you might not get support from the other six board members, but that's how great things happen. So yeah, feel free to, to express your interest in the park recreation system that we have in the city. Great, so Jeff and David and probably Steve, you too, maybe we can talk about the best way to structure that right. for the next meeting. And I do think it would be good to send something out a couple of weeks in advance if we want people to respond at the meeting. I agree. I, I think Paige, you started putting together a little more organized way to have that conversation. And I think we could, I think we can get it pulled together by that point. Great. Okay, really interesting conversation. Anything else before we move on? I think we can cover B and C at that next meeting too, because we've kind of talked a little bit about it on and off, but the general process for both the CIP and I'll just do a quick, quick summary and the general fund, uh, like Steve said, by uh, the first part of May, the CIP process will be done and staff has to have all of those submitted. By the end of May, we have to have all of our general fund requests submitted. From there, generally sometime in June, the city manager and the budget staff conduct a CIP meeting that talks about what they believe should be proposed as funded or unfunded. Uh, staff, that's our last real opportunity to give feedback uh, on that. Same thing in usually in July, we do uh, budget meetings with the city manager and the budget staff. Each one of the departments come in and they explain why they believe they have, they need the things that they've requested. From there, 
staff is generally out of the discussion. Um, the budget staff, city manager, um, put together a proposed CIP in a, in a uh, budget that's presented sometime in August to the city council. City council normally does both CIP budget hearings and general or uh, operating budget uh, meetings in at that month. They conduct uh, two public meetings in October and generally the last meeting in October or the first meeting in November, city council makes the uh, approval of the budget for 22. Kind of a quick summary. And Thanks, Paige, could I just add one more thing? Something that we're working on as staff is that we've seen a gap in approval for construction funds versus maintenance funds. We're trying to link the two. And so if you approve construction, you're approving maintenance dollars. And so that's something that we, with our operations staff are working toward, which will help with management of our park system in the future. I don't know, David, if you wanna to add to that at all, but that's something we've been talking a lot about. Thanks for bringing that up, Steve. I, I think it goes back, I think Scott made a point in his like the new shiny things that there's an assumption that if we build it, we're gonna take care of it. Um, because we only funded one year budget, that's not always the case because we build it in one year, then we need the, the maintenance dollars in another year. So we're really trying to do a better job of linking one. Um, we approve a project that there's a recognition that funds get set aside for that ongoing maintenance. So it is a little bit disconnect because what happens sometimes there's those new shiny things pull those dollars away um, from making decision to, to fund maintenance. So um, it, good piece to remind this group here and maybe something we back to you as we, we try to bring that forward as something that we definitely like council to consider as, as you fund a project, you gotta think we wanna keep that in perpetuity basically and that's gonna take ongoing funding. So thank you, Steve. Okay, anything else on that topic? Okay, if not, I think we can move on to item seven, which is any discussion or questions that you might have from the updates that were included in the packet. So these are the updates from David's staff and Jeff's staff um, regarding uh, things that have happened since our last meeting. Any questions, Dan? I have a general question about the whole COVID color scheme, you know, stages we're changing to. Uh, for example, the swimming lanes, number of people, et cetera. Uh, tennis court doors are still locked open. What's the, on, you know, what's going to happen or what's the time scale or, you know, who's discussing this and how does it happen, I guess? We are waiting for the next set of guidelines to come <laughs> out. Your guess is as good as ours on what that means. Um, we have some general guidelines that we have now of what it looks like if we go to blue, but it doesn't go into the detail of how many people in the lane, any of that. It's the, the word we're hearing is that there may be a, a new dial coming out that might change everything that we've seen so far. So we were planning but on hold too. So if you don't mind, Jeff, I'm gonna actually, uh, with your professionalism there, I just wanna let Dan know that in the meetings with Boulder County Public Health and other groups, Jeff's frustration is about as loud and clear as yours on kind of <laughs> where is this going, what are you doing? So Jeff, thank you for doing a great job in these. We are being recorded, it, it does wonders, I guess, but we all share that same frustration, Dan. It, it really is a, a hard piece for us to answer. And we're, we're always waiting for, the governor make his change so public health can make their change so we can go out there and unlock something or open something up so um but there must be some freedom i mean i can't imagine that they're going into the depth of you know you can't have three people in this fitness class or you can't i mean you have such some judgment don't you or swim lane no no really wow no none none whatsoever because what the general public doesn't see 
is like David said, the order comes from the governor, Colorado Public Health makes their interpretation, and then each one of the county's public health put more meat on the bone, if you will, that they actually are telling us right now, two people in a lane. They, if they receive complaints, they go to your facility and they check and verify if you're following the guidelines or not. So there really isn't a lot of uh, interpretation on our part. I'll just weigh in there that Jeff does a good job with this, as do, do all the other facility managers along the front range, because it comes down really even more restrictive because they don't know the details of what Jeff does in his facilities. So Jeff and Louisville and Lafayette and see a Boulder will get together and we'll sit down and we'll have a conversation that's saying this makes no sense. Boulder County will hear that. They'll push that back up and we usually get a little bit of common sense into it. I, I know it's hard to say on most days. Um, but, but Jeff and those, those facility managers are really doing a good job of trying to get a little bit of common sense because from that top down, they have no idea how you run a facility and it, it comes down very restrictive. So it's difficult then to plan ahead. It's not like you have a plan. A month from now, we're <laughs> gonna do this or two weeks from now, we're gonna be able to do, it's just react, is that the impression I get? I, I think we try to plan, but react is really, where we've been most of the time because they change, it changes sometimes so drastically or other times it, interpreting the blue right now, if we went from yellow to blue, it based on the way it's written today, it would have very little impact on the Longmont Rec Center because so much of it is tied to, you still got a social distance, you still have to wear a mask and a lot of it's based on your square footage. The square footage, as you know, never changes. So even though it appears you're getting better, it doesn't always mean that. And we're hoping that the new dial will allow more numbers than what we would have right now. So okay, Dan, I would, say, I, I would say the thing that we, we're constantly trying to be is just nimble because we know that we're moving towards opening more. So as soon as we get that word to do it, that's that's what, the only thing we can do to plan is make sure as soon as we get good or news from the governor and public health that we can make a change that opens things up to our community. We want to be able to do that as quickly as possible. Yeah. And generally, Dan, what happens, they send their information, like David said, and then we have a series of questions that we send back into Boulder County Public Health and wait for them to respond back to us. And the number of people in a swim lane is always the question because we're always trying to get more in there than right. what what they're happy with. Yeah, we still have one per lane, except yeah. for like a class, like masters. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. general that, rec. I'm guessing the, a, a lot of folks will like that to continue forever, one per lane. Yeah. Many folks that I talk to really like reserving a lane no sharing, nobody has to bug me, I don't have to split, but we got a lot of people dissatisfied they can't get a lane to swim in ever because of that. So it's yeah. a balance. Yeah, and the, and the other issue that we deal with is there's inconsistencies where one group is allowed to do something, and I'll use yep. the swim, swim teams as an example based on the lanes, they can have six people in a lane right now. What what is really the difference? Why does it matter which six people are in the lane? They they have all have the same potential of having the virus, if you will. And, and so it just is kind of awkward at times that, like David said, common sense doesn't always enter into it. <laughs> and, and I'm not complaining because I know it's probably very difficult for them to, to weigh through all these things. But in the same token, People are ready to get back and recreate, whether it's inside buildings or out in the parks. And, you know, they're just very tired of it. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions from the items in the packet? Great, okay, then I think we can move on to items from staff. 
I don't have anything. David? I, I think we have spoke quite a bit tonight. So thank you for <laughs> listening and engaging and being part of that conversation. Appreciate it. Great. Uh, any items from board members? Dan? Thank you all for listening to me so much tonight. I'll try to keep my mouth shut more. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> that was your item. <laughs> Paige actually had a question. Scott, who did you share that information with from Muska Longmont? And is there anybody else we need to reach out to with that um, information? Um, yeah, so uh, there was that one set of email, which was um, to you. Um, to this group for the most part, um, not this board, because as I understand it, I'm not supposed to send anything to the board um, from outside of the board. And um, and then um, we sent another email to uh, city council, but if you want to share it to others, we're gonna be putting it on the website um, soon and sending it out to the people from Bicycle Long Run anyway, so. Um, God, are you okay if, if David or I or Steve forward that to the rest of the board? No, feel free. That's okay, fine. all right, we'll do that. And as I said to Steve, I'll be able to get the comments in a day or two. Um, there's a couple of nasty comments and a couple of other things I'll take out first. But, do you um, take my money as far as who made the comments? <laughs> you, you could pretty much guess some, some of them, yeah. <clears throat> I don't if, if I could have one more minute to respond David, to Dan, yeah. I just want to say, Dan, and I really appreciate those kind of questions because a lot of times I think it, we as staff are not going to come to a board meeting and tell you all the reasons we can't get stuff done. We're going to kind of use the little soldier through and get it done. But when you ask those kind of questions, it allows us to explain and hopefully you're taking it back to the community and help them better understand some of the limitations we have. So I, I appreciate those questions, Dan. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Great. If not, um, good discussion tonight. And I would take a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Thanks. Do I have a second? I'll second. Great. All those in favor? Terrific. OK, the meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. And thanks, staff, for everything. Yep. Bye. Bye.